Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate the fact that you are here. Today's video is going to be discussing the orchid lingo subject of fertilizer. And what I will be talking about today is the macronutrients and the micronutrients. We're going to go into detail about what each of them do. If you were to look at your fertilizer label and see all the names and you are wondering, what do they do? It's a chatty video, so sit down, get yourself a cup of coffee or whatever is your beverage of choice. And keeping us company is my Rinko Lelio Cat Lea Golf Green Hair Pink and my beautiful Lelia Harpophila. Right, let's get into what it is that is in our fertilizer and why is it in there. So aside from nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, orchids also require other nutrients and they are categorized either as macronutrients or micronutrients. The elements identified as macronutrients are needed in larger quantities while micronutrients, also known as trace elements, are only needed in small doses. Macronutrients are calcium, carbon, hydrogen, magnesium, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur or sulfate interchangeably. The micronutrients or trace elements are boron, chlorine, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, zinc and cobalt. Now, if your orchid fertilizer does not have every single component included, that is because every brand and every formula differentiates a little bit. I'm pretty sure that most of these components will be in your fertilizer, if not all. Now, having rattled off that list, it is seemingly a long list of nutrients that should be included in your fertilizer. But luckily, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen are supplied through air and water and are not actually needed in the fertilizer as such, but it does not cancel out the fact that they are macronutrients and are needed. Most micronutrients or trace elements are not included in the fertilizer because they are found in potting mixes, in the water that is being used to water the plants, leaving most fertilizers for our plants consisting of calcium, magnesium, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfate. Here's the kicker though. Those of us who are using reverse osmosis water, rainwater, or any filtered water like zero water, also inorganic media, we need fertilizers that contain these micronutrients as well because everything in our growing method, the water we provide, the inorganic media we are using, you could consider them empty of any form of elements that our orchids need. It's not the correct word, but I would actually say it's sterile. Let me get into the macronutrients now and let's talk about what each of them does for our orchids and why we need them. Nitrogen promotes growth in parts of your orchid that you can see above the pot. So that would be the pseudobulbs, the leaves, the spikes. Ammoniacal nitrogen, if you have that component in your fertilizer, impacts the pH by lowering it, the pH of the water. If you're in organic media, the pH of the media will also be lowered. It is nitrogen derived from ammonia and is a form of nitrogen that plants can readily use. Phosphorus promotes root growth, encourages healthy root systems and is responsible for beautiful blooms. Potassium is crucial for the orchid's overall health. This important nutrient helps plants deal with stresses associated with temperature, disease, and insects. Magnesium is the powerhouse behind photosynthesis in plants. Without magnesium, chlorophyll cannot capture sun energy needed for photosynthesis. In short, magnesium is required to give leaves their green color. And in plants, magnesium is located in the enzymes, basically in the heart of the chlorophyll molecule. It is used by our orchids for the metabolism of carbohydrates and in the cell stabilization. Calcium. The primary function of calcium in our orchids is to provide structural support to the cell walls. It also serves as a secondary measure when our plants are physically or biochemically stressed. Sulfate, together with nitrogen, is essential as building blocks for protein and the formation of chlorophyll, which once again permits photosynthesis through which our orchids produce starch, sugars, and other compounds. So that pretty much covers the macronutrients and their function, what they are good for. When it comes to the micronutrients, let's look at why those of us with the inorganic media and filtered water need to ensure our fertilizers have the micronutrients and what it is that they do and are good for. 
Boron is a micronutrient. It plays a key role in a diverse range of plant functions, including cell wall formation and stability. It maintains the structural and functional integrity of membranes, the movement of sugar or energy into the growing parts of the orchid. You will also see chlorine as a micronutrient. It is rare in fertilizers, but some of them have it, and its functions in the growth and development of our orchids include osmotic and stomatal regulation, evolution of oxygen in photosynthesis, and disease resistance as well as tolerance. Copper is required for many enzymatic activities within the orchid, promoting chlorophyll production. Iron is essential for vital functions such as the production of enzymes and chlorophyll, nitrogen fixing, cell development and metabolism. I will get back to the nitrogen fixing. Manganese is essential for photosynthesis, respiration and nitrogen assimilation. Molybdenum helps transform nitrates into protein for plant growth and a deficiency in molybdenum would stunt plant growth resulting in leaves with pale green or yellow green in color. Very similar to a magnesium deficiency, but I'm not going to get sidetracked about deficiencies in this video. Zinc promotes cell growth and a fun fact, much like its uses for us humans, it promotes wound healing. Cobalt slows down the older part of the orchid's aging process, also known as retardation of senescence. And cobalt is essential for nitrogen fixation. So we're back with the nitrogen fixation. But nitrogen fixation applies to all our orchids because by definition, our orchids are nitrogen fixing plants. And defining nitrogen fixing plants are those whose roots are colonized by certain bacteria that extract nitrogen from the air and convert or fix it into a form required for their growth, also known as epiphytes. So cobalt and iron, super important for our epiphytes, essential for the function of nitrogen fixation. So let's go back to talking about the fertilizers. Many of us will be using synthetic fertilizers and the same brand can have several formulas which indicate which one would be ideal for the individual water quality used for watering our orchids. You may see that there is one brand that says reverse osmosis, rainwater, tap water. And in some cases, there would also be a distinguishing factor of are you using well water? And that is because of what I mentioned earlier when it came to some fertilizers do not have micronutrients because tap water will already contain those micronutrients. But we also know that our orchids require the cleanest, least amount of parts per million quality water that we can give them. And in doing so, RO water, or the zero filter water, rainwater usually has such low parts per million that none of the micronutrients are included. And that is why synthetic fertilizers will make sure that you pick what quality water you are using and then they will send you the fertilizer that matches the quality of water you're using to compensate that your water may not have any micronutrients in it. And for that reason, there is a distinction between the different water types and the different composition of nutrients in that fertilizer. Having said all that, always remember our orchids do not need a lot of fertilizer. Their metabolism is super, super slow. When we talk about the micronutrients, the trace elements, when you look at the percentage in your fertilizer, the percentage is up to a hundredth of a decimal. So it's not like we need to go scrambling and finding all these different elements to supplement, which is a completely different video. Fertilizer for orchids can be balanced. You can get the 20-20-20, then you get the different percentages that come with the MSU or with the rain mix. You can also get any kind of plant fertilizer that is generic, but it has to be dialed down to maybe a quarter. If we're pushing it a half of the dosage that a natural plant would tolerate because our orchid's metabolism is so slow and they will not be able to absorb high quantities like any other regular house plant will. So this is not about which fertilizer is best, this is just about explaining every single nutrient that you see on a fertilizer label. 
and know that inorganic growing may give you more control with regards to what you're putting in your pot, but it also takes away everything that is normally in organic media, as in bark or sphagnum moss. And deficiencies are very, very quickly to recognize when growing in inorganic media, because if there are no micronutrients in the fertilizer, the orchid will not have that to draw from, from any kind of organic media. Let me know in the comments if this was of help. Personally, I'm not a chemistry buff myself, but the minute I got my orchid collection together and started growing in inorganic media using RO water, I was very, very quick to find out what it is that I needed to do to provide the right kind of fertilizer for my orchids which took me down the rabbit hole of what does each of these components do and why do I need them? And I thought I would share that with you today. I realized it was a chatty, kind of a dry subject. I appreciate your time if you watch the video to the end. Thank you so very, very much. I wish you a beautiful day on one condition. This is a macronutrient condition. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.